This is a true crime in real time update from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. It's a brisk November morning in Moscow, Idaho, a town nestled quietly among the mountains, home to students and scholars. But in November of 2022, the peaceful town became the center of a horrifying tragedy, one that gripped the nation and raised more questions than it answered. Four young lives were brutally cut short, and the man accused of committing the unthinkable crime? Brian Koberger. Brian Koberger. A name now intertwined with the kind of terror that most people can't imagine. A 29-year-old Ph.D. student studying criminology at Washington State University, just a short drive across the state line from the University of Idaho, where four students were found dead in their off-campus home. And now, nearly two years later, Koberger's name is still in the headlines. Not just because of the murders themselves, but because of a contentious legal battle over whether or not he should face the death penalty. In October 2024, Idaho prosecutors pushed back on a bid by Koberger's defense team to remove the death penalty from the table. It's a move that's not surprising given the nature of the crime. But Koberger's attorneys, led by Ann Taylor and Elisa Massoth, argue that there are legal reasons to challenge the death penalty, and they've made several bold claims. Claims that prosecutors say don't hold up under Idaho's legal precedent. The defense's request, filed earlier this year, claims that the death penalty violates the U.S. Constitution on multiple fronts. They argue that Idaho has no viable method for carrying out executions and that the state's two options, lethal injection and the firing squad, are both fraught with constitutional issues. Koberger's lawyers have even gone as far as to suggest that the firing squad, which Idaho reinstated as an option for executions last year, was never constitutional to begin with. It's a bold argument, one that has sparked intense debate in the courtroom and beyond. And it's just one of many avenues the defense is using to challenge the state's pursuit of capital punishment. They've also raised concerns about whether Koberger has been given adequate time to prepare his defense in a case this complex and argued that certain legal standards weren't met in the indictment process. But according to Idaho prosecutors, these arguments don't stand up to scrutiny. In a series of filings made public in early October, Special Assistant Attorney General Jeff Nye and Lotta County Prosecuting Attorney Bill Thompson pushed back on the defense's claims. They argue that Koberger's lawyers are attempting to move the goalposts, making demands that are simply not supported by Idaho law. One of the key arguments made by Koberger's defense is that aggravating factors circumstances that could make a crime eligible for the death penalty must be presented to a grand jury. But in their response, prosecutors countered that this argument is squarely foreclosed by binding Idaho Supreme Court precedent. In simpler terms, the law doesn't require that every detail be presented to a grand jury when the state is seeking the death penalty. As long as the prosecution includes a probable cause affidavit and notifies the defense of its intent to pursue capital punishment within 60 days of the arraignment, they are within their legal rights. And that's exactly what prosecutors say they did. They notified Koberger's defense team within the required time frame that they would be seeking the death penalty. They also included the necessary information in a superseding indictment detailing the probable cause for why Koberger should be charged with four counts of first-degree murder and one count of felony burglary. It's a legal back and forth that's become increasingly common in death penalty cases where defense teams look for any possible angle to challenge the state's decision to seek the ultimate punishment. But in this case, prosecutors argue, the defense is asking for something that the law simply doesn't require. There's also the issue of the expert testimony that Koberger's defense team wants to introduce. Specifically, they want to bring in an expert to testify in constitutional issues surrounding capital punishment. It's not an uncommon tactic in cases like this. Defense teams often look for ways to challenge the death penalty on constitutional grounds, especially in states where the execution methods themselves are controversial. Idaho's two current methods of execution are lethal injection and the firing squad. Lethal injection has come under intense scrutiny in recent years 
due to a number of botched executions where the drugs used either didn't work properly or caused excruciating pain. The firing squad, meanwhile, is a method steeped in both history and controversy. Idaho reinstated it last year, and it remains one of the few states where it's still an option. Koberger's defense team claims that both methods violate the Eighth Amendment, which prohibits cruel and unusual punishment. But prosecutors say that expert testimony on this issue isn't relevant to the case at hand. In their filings, they point to a long-standing Idaho Supreme Court ruling that says expert witnesses cannot offer legal conclusions. Such conclusions are for the court, not the experts, to determine. It is now well established in Idaho that testimony containing conclusions of law by an expert witness is generally inadmissible, Thompson wrote, citing the state's legal precedent in Ibarra v. Bedke. In other words, the defense's request to bring in an expert to testify on whether Idaho's death penalty violates the Constitution is likely to be shot down. Still, the debate surrounding Idaho's execution methods continues. After the state reinstated the firing squad as a legal option, some legal experts argued that, despite its violent and archaic nature, it might actually be more humane than lethal injection. Fordham Law School Professor Deborah Denno, one of the nation's leading experts on capital punishment, told Fox News Digital that the firing squad is the quickest, surest, and most error-free method of execution. In fact, Denno believes that if given the choice, many death row inmates would choose a bullet over a needle. Koberger's defense team, however, argues otherwise. In their filings, they argue that the firing squad has never been constitutional under U.S. law and that it should be considered a violation of both the Eighth and Fourteenth Amendments. It's a claim that, like many others in this case, will ultimately be decided by the courts. But the legal wrangling over the death penalty is only part of the story. At the center of this case are the four University of Idaho students who were brutally murdered in their home on November 13th, 2022. Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gunkalves, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin, four young lives full of promise, cut short in a violent attack that left the small town of Moscow reeling. Investigators say that Koberger was the man behind the murders. According to law enforcement, cell phone pings placed Koberger near the victim's house. On the day of the killings, surveillance footage captured his car traveling through the area at key moments, and DNA evidence allegedly linked Koberger to a knife sheath found at the scene. But the defense maintains that Koberger was not there. Instead, they say, he was driving around rural roads in the dark, admiring the moon and stars. It's a defense that's drawn skepticism given the mountain of circumstantial evidence against him. But Koberger's legal team is fighting back, arguing that the state's case is far from airtight. They've pointed to inconsistencies in the investigation and argued that Koberger has been denied a fair trial due to intense media coverage and what they describe as a mob mentality in the local jury pool. Earlier this year, Koberger's defense successfully petitioned for a change of venue, moving the case from Lotta County, where the murders occurred, to Ada County, where Koberger is now incarcerated. The move was seen as a victory for the defense, who argued that it would be impossible for Koberger to receive a fair trial in Moscow, where emotions still run high nearly two years after the killings. As the trial date looms, the case against Koberger continues to unfold, he faces four counts of first-degree murder and one count of felony burglary in connection with the deaths of Mogan, Goncalves, Kernodal, and Chapin. If convicted, he could face the death penalty, a punishment that the state believes is warranted given the nature of the crime. But for Koberger's defense team, the fight is far from over. They've raised numerous challenges to the state's case, from constitutional arguments about the death penalty to concerns about the fairness of of the trial itself, and while prosecutors are confident that they have followed the letter of the law, the outcome remains uncertain. A hearing on the death penalty issue is scheduled for November 7, 2024. It's just one of many legal battles that will take place before Koberger's trial, which is expected to begin next year. For now, the families of the victims, the people of Moscow, and the nation as a whole wait for answers in a case that has already shaken the foundations of this small college town. In the end, 
The question isn't just whether Brian Koberger will be convicted of these heinous crimes. It's also about what kind of justice will be served. Will the state seek the ultimate punishment? Or will Koberger's legal team succeed in their efforts to have the death penalty taken off the table? Only time will tell. In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. Well, they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic, very bad narcissistic personality traits, and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence. Join Tony Bruschi as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases. They said it was an accident, but the evidence clearly says otherwise. Each episode, we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. To your point of narcissism, he thinks in his own mind how witty he is, yeah. but he lost that jury. I, I was I was done with him in two minutes. From unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes. Geez, you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun. I bet you did a YouTube video, how to best kill somebody with a knife. Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi takes you where few dare to go. How does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed? For so long with multiple new episodes every single day we're not just telling stories we're seeking justice listen now on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts just search for hidden killers with tony brewski